talked about that in meeting the needs of your students, particularly the multiple levels, even if they say that they're all on grade level, that's something that you need to consider. So when you're designing your lessons, you need to consider, well, you know what, how are they going to be learning through investigation? You know, it's not just going to be me modeling or going up to the board and demonstrating how it is, but they're actually getting concrete um, uh, items to kind of work with, the materials to work with to acquire the new learning. Um, Project-based learning. So there are multiple steps that need to take place or multiple objectives to get to the end result. And this is what we're going to be doing uh, to, to get there. I, I mentioned response to intervention, so you really need to know for those students that are still exhibiting difficulty but do not necessarily um, fall under a specific area of support, then how would I address those needs? How would I document that? How would, it, how would we move from one level to another? So do a little bit of research with that, if you don't already know. The gradual release model, something that we, that's pretty standard, and then just kind of put a name to it, is that then you're not going to present new information and expect the students to know it. You're going to walk them through and help them through the learning until they're able to be released on their own. So you're not going to demonstrate one item one time and then, and then assess them to see if they're able to, to, to master the learning. Okay? It's multiple opportunities for, uh, for learning to take place. And then you should really be very, very, um, not very, but you should have some exposure to the multiple uh, programs that they have uh, for students. Okay, so are they uh, second language learners? Are they uh, bilingual? Are they, are they special ed? And what are the requirements for each? Okay, so how would you address those? How would you go about determining the needs of the individual students? Okay. This is for cross-curricular, so if anyone is outside of the, um, what we would consider the content areas and how they, you, uh, as you're interviewing, you would want, so if you have any friends, you would want to focus in on how you would support content level instruction within your, uh, within your areas. And then once you kind of look and you complete um, the, the panel interview where you demonstrate a lesson, you could also, and this is the third type, you could also move into having interviews at the campus level. And you have to be prepared for multiple things to happen. When you actually have a campus level interview, it could be that it's a one-to-one -one principal and applicant. It could be a one-to-one -one principal uh, or applicant and principal designee. It could be a, um, uh, an interview where you're there and you have a certain grade level there, the grade level that's particularly needing a new teacher, or it could be you in a specific content area. So it could be multiple settings, and you have to be prepared for all. Um, so make sure that whenever you take items, you have extra copies. Anticipate that there's going to be more than one. Okay, that'll just kind of be better for you. Okay, move on. Um, so the interview questions that will be posed at the campus level will be similar to those domains we mentioned earlier where we talked about the overview, kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, the classroom environment, assessment, uh, student management, that professionalism, because those are really central things that every district kind of focuses in on. Now with that said, know that you may be able to provide surface level questions, answers at the, at the uh, initial interview. They're going to want specific more in-depth responses at the campus level, okay? Kind of think about how you can um, really narrow the focus and answer those questions in uh, very specific terms. Now, we're moving on to some additional last minute things, aha, uh -huh, things to think about. <laughs> because you may not think these are important, but as sure as I'm standing here today, I'm gonna tell you they may a difference. Okay. So some of these things you may have heard already. But it's important for you to know because, because things things like this, you don't want them to reflect um, that you are not as professional as you are. Okay? So let's start off with your email. What do you think that, that email could we could benefit from change from changing that email? I mean, what could what could happen? The username. Huh? The username. What is it called? The username. What is a username? It's your Baby it's girl. Called. Now, does that reflect a professional username? 
No, it does not. Baby girl certainly does not. So these are things that you need to start considering now because you're getting those applicant those resumes ready, right? Okay, so you want it to reflect professionalism. What about your phone? No song. You know what? Oh, somebody said a song. Now, if I, I'm going to tell you, you make me listen to a complete song before I'm able to leave a message, the odds are I'm not going to wait, right? Right. So, now, and, and then also, the, the appropriateness of the song, right? Send the message, you know, um, knowing that it could be a professional phone call. You don't want to say, you know, you want to be very professional in how you ask individuals to leave a message. We hear these things all the time. And, you know, if you want to be viewed as a professional, I'm going to tell you. I have, I, we've always wanted to be a te teacher, okay? Um, wouldn't want to be in any other profession. I take pride in, in being an educator and our profession. And quite frankly, I expect and Ms. Cavazos is my supervisor, <coughs> expects that we all take pride and demonstrate that level of, of uh, professionalism, okay? Because we are the models for our students, and we have to practice what we preach. So with that said, you know, we're held to a different standard, <coughs> and that, I can tell you now, will not be compromised, okay? So think about those things. So now that we're all going to go check our phone messages, let's move on. Another, another slide where you're going to talk about being available in the summertime. Um, you know what? It, it, also, it, 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 as far as phone messages and email, if it changes, you need to update your information. Um, it's difficult sometimes when we'll try to call someone and that number's been changed and not available, or it's been disconnected. And so you do need to be available, especially in the summertime, if you haven't assumed the completion. Okay. <coughs> now, social networking. Anybody hear anything about that? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, if you have any type of, um, so what are they? Facebook. What else do you have? MySpace. Twitter. You need to be very cautious. You need to be very cautious. Now, we understand that elements that may be included there are personal, during personal time. But the fact of the matter is, is that anyone can get into your items at any time. Parents, administrators, okay, students, at any time. Now, I share this because this is actually the truth, and Ms. Cavazos knows, that we had a parent that notified, I think it was a year, Dr. Bamberg, you. Okay. Notified Ms. Cavazos and said there was a picture of a teacher that was had an alcoholic beverage in her possession. So, of course, Ms. Cavazos comes and says, Selena, I need you to kind of look through this. And here we go. And we were able to kind of look and view the picture. And there was a teacher, very nicely dressed. It appeared as though she was in a costume. And she had a styrofoam glass in her hand. She could have had milk in there, she could have had tea in there, she could have had anything. But how is the perception of the parent? What is the perception of the parent? She has an alcoholic beverage. So although there was no clear indication, we still had to consult with the teacher and say, you know what? You know, it's not the question isn't what you had in there. Think about how it's perceived by your parents. Okay? Think about how it's perceived by your parents. So when I say that we're held to a higher standard, we are. And that's part of our job. Okay? And so you have to make those, and you need to start now. You need to start I will now. say that they do go on the spot check. They may not look at everybody's mm -hmm. email, but especially when you look into the principal panel and the teacher panel, they will go on and look to see what your Facebook page looks like. Is it important to you? Okay, how many of you have children? Does anyone have children? Okay, so just as important as it is to you as a teacher, how important, okay, is having a good teacher, okay? 
that is not representative of, of and I'm not talking about that because I don't think it's, I don't see it. Right. Okay? But having your child, because it's almost like giving approval, okay? To being out, you know, it, and it just depends. It just depends. But you have to be cautious. We're telling you because this is how it is. Okay? It doesn't, it doesn't reflect our opinions. We're telling you this is reality. And, and let me just yeah. say, if you don't think that they're out there checking, a week does not go by that I do not have a phone call where I have to look at a, at a Facebook page and address the teacher about their page. There's not a week that it's not go by. And parents want, yeah. if not more. Parents call. They want to know why this teacher has this Facebook page up. Then they get. Then they don't. Then they don't stop there. Yeah, then they get the rest of the parents involved in the class. Before you know it, it's a big a teacher and I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to be really honest. Okay, for someone to say, well, do they look at your parents' Facebook? To me, that would that that that's disturbing. Okay, that disturbs me. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why. Because you have been entrusted with parents' most precious, item, most precious things. Okay, and to come into our profession, you have to have a clear understanding of not only the expectations of the district, but the expectations of the parents. And as a parent, okay, as a parent, I want very positive, I mean, I want positive role models up there. And although some of those pictures may not be inappropriate, okay, there isn't a, there isn't a, a line that says this is appropriate, this is inappropriate. So what we're merely telling you now is to be cautious. You know what you have. You don't need me or anyone else standing up here to say, could this be viewed as something inappropriate? Okay? Now, it is what it is. This is our profession. And so what you choose to do with it could be reflected, and we're trying to prevent things from happening. You heard them, you heard Ms. Cavasso say that they go to her. They didn't go to the principal, they didn't go to the assistant, they didn't go to the teacher. Who do they go to? A superintendent. Okay? So do you want to place yourself in that position? But these are just things for you to think about. However you choose to respond, it's up to you. Okay? Now we share this. We share this because it's common. It happens it's frequent. And it would not be fair for us not to share that with you. It wouldn't be. Okay, it wouldn't be fair for us not to share that with you. It's also ethical standards is something that you hear all the time. You hear on the news. Consequently, these are items that will be visited and revisited every year. Okay? And although you say, well, we know better, sometimes even a, 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 an innocent attempt can be viewed as, as something negative. So be very cautious. We, and I can't emphasize enough that we are held to a different standard. I'm held to a different standard than my husband that's in the business world. Okay? But I knew that coming in. Okay, so now we go into appointments. Ooh, when you get that appointment and you're really excited, please make sure that you're there on time. Now we tell you to get there early. That is ideal. We always recommend get there early. Early. Okay, because that says a lot about you. Anticipate possible um, accidents, traffic. Do a drive-by before you uh, the night before. Know exactly where you're going. It's important. Okay? Get there on time. We know. We know that things happen. We know that sometimes things happen and you may be a few minutes late. And no matter how sorry you are, you know why? Wait. Okay? So anticipate. I did think about those things. Um, attire. Now, it is not it is not necessary for you to go and buy a brand new suit. Okay? But you do need to reflect pride in our profession. Okay? So whatever you're wearing, okay, just make sure that you look nice and that it's conservative. Okay? So nothing too tight, nothing too low, nothing too short. Okay? If you fall if you go by those, if you follow that, then you'll be perfect. If you are hesitant and think and are, are trying to determine whether or not something needs to be ironed, iron it. Is it good enough like this? If you have to even ask the question, then you you know what? I wonder if this blouse is too low cut. If you have to ask the question, 
why, why even do it? Why even attend? Now, think about, we need to see you in the role of the teacher. So if you come in with something really short, even though it could be a suit or heels this high, then what, can I see you interacting and getting it actively involved with the student? Not necessarily, okay? So we're giving you suggestions to think about. Males, definitely. Perfect example of what I would love to see. You always say that. Right here. Stand up. Stand up. Perfect example of what I would love to see. Can you imagine, can you imagine the influence that he would have on a student, male or female, that may not have a male figure in the house? Imagine the potential that he has just by making a good selection in the morning or the night before. And it does, you don't have to buy expensive clothes. <laughs> Just make sure that you look, you're, you're looking professional. Speak up. Yes. Oh, which Woo. is Your seats. <laughs> okay, and I, and I almost forgot about these. Sometimes, I, they, I love jewelry, okay? I love earrings, but sometimes they could also be a distractor. You want the person that's interviewing you to focus on the content of what you're saying and not admiring your earrings, okay? So be conservative, be conservative. Now, we've asked about piercings. Some policies have specific guidelines for piercings, okay? I know specifically in our case, males are not to have any piercings that are visible to students. I tell you, we're, we're conservative, okay? So that'll be something that you need to research. Tattoos, okay? Although we see them more frequently than we have in the past, okay? If you're in a conservative district like ours, then they would be covered, okay? They would be covered. Now I'm gonna tell you, as a professional, okay? You want to make sure that you maintain that conservative appearance. Does that answer your question? So, be confident. And sometimes that's difficult. It's difficult to be confident when you're, when you're, you're nervous. And you should be nervous. Okay? You're excited. You're, you're eager. You want to get started. But you know what? The person that's come in before you, think about this. The person that walked in before you and had the interview before you was also nervous. Okay? The person coming in after you, guess what? Is also going to be nervous. Be you. Be confident. And trust that you've been taught and you've been exposed to the right thing. 